Good morning, everyone, Good morning. and a warm welcome as we gather here in New Cumnock Parish Church. We also welcome those who will join us later online or on the phone. Tea, coffee and biscuits will be served in the hall after the service today, and you're invited to share fellowship there. Please keep the minister informed of anybody who needs pastoral support, and a form is available at the front door of the church. This morning, the flowers have been donated by a good friend from Hong Kong, Margaret Matheson. The Open Door Group meets tomorrow from 2pm until 4 in the church hall, and everyone is welcome there. The prayer time continues this Wednesday evening from 6.45 until 7.30pm on the Parish Church Facebook page. Alternatively, you can collect a paper copy of the prayer points, which is available at the front door of the church. The coffee bean continues on Thursday morning in the church hall from 9.45 until 11.45. Everyone is welcome, and it's Baking Rota 1 this week. Also on Thursday, the sanctuary will be open from 11 until 12 for some quiet reflection. Someone will be present to pray with you, or pray for healing for someone you know. The World Day of Prayer takes place this Friday, Friday the 3rd of March, and there will be a service here in the church at 2pm, and everyone is welcome. The Smiles Foundation are still looking for essential items, and there are notices about where you can help. Any donation is greatly appreciated. Sunday School, we're still looking for some assistance to help with the Sunday School. If you think you could do that, please speak to Margaret McCrandall when she's back from holiday. The Sacrament of the Lord's Supper will take place here in the church next Sunday morning at 11am. Elders are asked to meet in the session room at 10.40. A retiring collection will be taken at the door of the church that day. This is for the DEC appeal for the Turkey and Syrian earthquake. Reverend Ken is out of the parish at the moment and will return this Friday. Any pastoral support that is needed will be provided by Deacon Muriel Wilson. And you can contact Muriel on 07719-355-925. Old Cumnock Old Guild are having an outing on Wednesday, the 17th of May, to the Devil's Porridge Museum in East Riggs, then on to Gretna Outlet, followed by a meal at the Woodlands Hotel near Dumfries, a busy day. The cost of the bus is £12. The cost of the meal has yet to be confirmed. Anyone from New Cumnock is very welcome to join. Please leave your name and contact number in a sheet at the front door or speak to Christine Wilson. Any items you may have, for intimation should be with Ken no later than Thursday. This morning, the worship team will be leading the service. As you will be aware, over the past few weeks, different people have been giving the welcome and intimations. This is to share the load, and we will continue with members of the worship team doing this. Now, let us worship God.
What is Lent? Lent is the period starting this year on the 22nd of February, Ash Wednesday, and finishing on Saturday 8th April, the day before Easter Sunday. Its name originates from the word lengthen or spring. During this period, Christians remember the suffering of Jesus on the way to the cross. Traditionally, pulpit falls and lectern falls are purple in colour, and many ch churches are stripped of decorations and flowers. It is a time for sad reflection, which contrasts with the joy of Easter Sunday morning. The three traditional pillars of Lent are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Through the three pillars of Lent, many Christians journey to develop a closer relationship with God. The 40 days of Lent are often filled with reflection, service, and prayer. Let us all stand now as we sing our first hymn, Lord, from the depths to thee I cried. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come together in this place today to worship and praise your holy name. On this first Sunday, Sunday in Lent, we meet to try to get our lives back into focus. Our lives can be so easily distorted by the false values of this world, providing false roads for us to travel instead of sticking to your road, which is the road to life. We confess our inability to live our lives in harmony with your will. 
Lord, forgive us all our sins, known and unknown, and renew us by your Holy Spirit, so that we may glow and shine anew. Merciful God, grant us the aid of your Holy Spirit, that we may live in accordance with your will and mould ourselves nearer to the example of Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose words we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now stand to sing hymn 380, There is a Green Hill Far Away. The first reading this morning is from Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sins the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped, as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. 
I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by a bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all, you who are upright in heart. Thanks be to God for his work to us today. In this psalm we have just heard, the psalmist is indicating just how important it is for us to constantly stay close to God. Everything associated with Lent emphasises this. Fasting is meant to make us realise just how much we depend on God for daily bread. It is when we are truly hungry that we come to appreciate just how necessary food is for our well-being. Prayer is another way of coming close to God. In Psalm 32, the psalmist stresses the importance of thanks given, forgiveness to commit sorry I'll start that again in Psalm 32 the psalmist stresses the importance of forgiveness to the committed believer if we are to continue to advance in the faith we need to confess our shortcomings and seek God's renewing strength in all our human undertakings large and small we cannot do as we ought without the forgiveness and renewing hand of God. The psalmist admits that when he broke his communication with God, he wasted away days and his strength was sapped as if in the heat of summer. But when he realised his failure and returned to God for, for forgiveness, he was renewed and moved on from strength to strength, reaffirmed and renewed. So, the simple lesson that the psalmist is teaching is quite simple. Stay in touch with God. Make it a daily habit. It is something that will give us all great strength. We will now pray for others. Our loving Father, our world is in a mess. You know that full well, just as you created the beginning of all things, and you know the outcomes right to the end and everything else in between. Thank you for the undeserved love you have for all people for your concern over those who have taken wrong decisions, have abused others, who have been motivated by greed and power, who scheme and manipulate, lie and cheat for their own benefit. Those who have distanced themselves from you, your truth and your light. We ask for all those affected by the war in Ukraine, and we ask for your intervention for good into the situation, that warfare may be de-escalated and that compromise and peace may yet come. We ask for the rest of the world, praying that other countries would not be drawn into the conflict. We pray very much for survivors of the Turkey's Syrian earthquake struggling to cope with all that has happened to them, the losses they have suffered, the basic needs they need for survival, and the very real fear they have for the future. We thank you for the work of all aid agencies and ask for your provision in these two countries on all levels. 
We pray for our own community and for the others in which we live. We ask for strength and courage for doctors, nurses, paramedics, and other medical staff, both locally and hospital-based, that you would provide all they need in these difficult times. To help those in care, we also ask for this, for those who care for family and friends at home. Father, we also bring to you those we know who are vulnerable, those who are worried about keeping a roof over their heads, those struggling to put food on the table and to keep lights on and heating on, those looking for suitable accommodation, those with health issues and disabilities. We pray for those who have lost a loved one recently or in the past, those for whom that loss has changed their lives forever. We pray your loving arms would surround them. You would bring comfort and strength for each day and hope for the future. We ask especially for the family and friends of Nicola Bully, torn apart in recent times. Be near to them in these days and weeks and months that lie ahead. Sustain all those who have been bereaved as they support one another and gradually piece their lives back together. Lord, we pray now for the Reverend Ken York, our minister and friend. We thank you for all his work here in church and for the community and for his enthusiasm and wisdom and ask that you would continue to guide, to inspire and to provide all the strength and courage he needs from day to day. Father, it is hard for us when family and friends are suffering through ill health and other circumstances. Give us all we need to offer help and encouragement, to lift their spirits, to enable them. Lord, into each situation of helplessness and despair, bring your comfort, strength and healing as only you can give. In silence, we now bring to you those we know who are in need at this time. Father, thank you that you have heard and you will answer in Jesus' name. Our second reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 1. The Temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but in every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift up your hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. And this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. Thanks be to God for his word to us today. Amen. 
the wilderness experience. We heard from Matthew's gospel this morning how Jesus, almost immediately after his baptism, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. It could well be that what is being emphasized here is not a one and only event of temptation that Jesus experienced, but one which he encountered several times throughout his earthly life. The temptation was to use his special power to impress and bring in the kingdom of God the easy way. On the other hand, Jesus may have welcomed this experience. Out there in the peace and quiet of the desert, he had time to think. What exactly did this mean when he heard the voice at his baptism? You are my beloved son, and I am well pleased with you. Where was this leading? How might he move forward? Jesus retreated from the crowds to reorientate himself, to have space to reflect and to pray. But of course, human factors also came to his mind. Temptation to do things quite differently from what God was calling him to do. And after temptation, his determination to be obedient to the will of God was victorious. We too, as Christians, are constantly presented with temptations. The call to follow some other route rather than God's way for us. And yet, these inner conflicts are the very stuff of Christian personal development. Finding the courage to squarely face up to our insecurities, anxieties, and besetting sins is the first step to being freed from them. And when, like Jesus, in his soul-searching, we seek guidance and encouragement from the Bible and prayer, we are arming ourselves with the spiritual resources which lead to wisdom. It is especially in the season of Lent that we are encouraged to do this, when we look back to the beginnings of Christianity in our Scottish landscape, we can see a fascinating parallel between the wilderness experience of Jesus and the Celtic saints. Both began their successful mission by withdrawal into solitude. The early Celtic Christians sought out wild and desolate places for their base. They built little beehive huts next to natural springs on rocky islands, cliff promontories, and mountains. Here they would pray, recite psalms, weave baskets, tend to their bees, and fish. But far from feeling lonely, these men and women experienced a profound communion with the natural world caught up in the beauty of elemental nature, befriending animals, birds, and seals. They found God's holy presence revealed in all creation. In contrast to our modern, pushy forms of evangelicalism, sorry, <laughs> Christianity spread in the age of the Celtic saints through the example of shy, reflectful, prayerful hermits. We live in a 24-hour-a-day economy, bombarded by messages from answer phones, emails, text messages, swamped by images of glamour and horror by the media, constantly accosted by the temptations of advertising. It is a wonder that we manage to retain any peace of mind at all. Our lives are an endless whirl of activity, and it is addictive. The more we do, the more we are stimulated. 
into this commotion comes the gentle invitation of Jesus. Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy burden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. To learn from Jesus in his example in the wilderness is to follow him into a pattern of life in which withdrawal, prayer, and self-examination become a refuge and a source of inspiration. But where can we begin? Lent gives us permission to say to ourselves, take a break. Get out into the fresh air and leave the world to keep turning on its own. Let go of all of your plans and aspirations and worries and place them all in the hands of God. Relax, unwind, breathe deeply. The Celtic saints discovered that the peace and quiet which they found in their wilderness retreats could be invoked whenever they withdrew from prayer. They made time to relax and find communion with God. Lent encourages us to do this, so why not give it a try? We will stand to sing hymn 374, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe.
Let us pray. For all your goodness and your grace, we offer our thanks, O Lord. For this season of Lent, we thank you, offering us the opportunity to slow down in our busy lives and to reflect on the suffering of our Saviour. For times of quiet reflection, bringing you insights, we give you thanks for our remembrance of the fact that you loved us all so much, that you entered this world in human form to live and die for us, rescuing us from the power of sin and death. Lord, accept the offerings which we now bring. Bless them and use them to help spread the good news of Jesus our Lord. In his name we ask it. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 363, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with us and remain with us evermore. Amen.